Here we are with Overlord Season 4, Episode 5, and last episode was amazing. We saw how this whole Colosseum fight came together. We saw Ainz fighting the Warrior King. The Warrior King, the strongest force in the Empire, became Ainz um, subordinate because Ainz made, made a deal with him that if he wins, that he becomes a, his subordinate. And Elnix is completely devastated and just wants to become a vassal state of Ainz's kingdom because otherwise he fears that something bad might happen to the Empire if he's just in an alliance. So yeah, if you like what you see or if you want to support me, leave a like, subscribe or comment. I would really appreciate it and it would really help me. But yeah, let's get to the episode. Oh, Demiurge. This is the first time that we see him this season. What is he plotting? He's plotting something. And she is doing his work. <laughs> okay, against the theocracy. I told you, Demiurge's plans. Yeah. <laughs> he wants some praise. Oh, <laughs> that's so sweet. What? He's already in the Dwarven Kingdom. Dude, Ainz is moving hyperspeed here. First the Empire, now the Dwarven Kingdom? Of course. <laughs> oh really? What did he say? あなたが立案した世界征服の許可が納得いってなかったんじゃないかしら。どうも。それ<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> In three days instead of like a month. <laughs> no, they're overthinking things again. Yeah. Wow. Because of his m master plan, he's 50 steps ahead. <laughs> Dude, I love it how they just overthink things all the time. They had a plan to make a vessel state out of the Empire and Demiurge is like, yeah, that takes like a month. Einz does it by coincidence because he has other plans, which is getting adventure to his kingdom. And then three days later, Empire is like, yeah, let me become a vessel state, please, because Elnix is also overthinking everything and is completely desperate for anything to get like his empire to safety basically and it's just everyone is overthinking things and think that, thinks that Einz is so smart when he just does things and just stuff happens for him and falls into his lap basically it's so funny <laughs> they have a statue of his military force yeah of course friendly relationships Carrot on the uh, carrot on the, on the stick. Oh, very smart. Having some master smiths. Oh, we see some Shaltia too. Oh, him. Interesting. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Understandable. What's Kokutus deal? I feel like Kokutus is a bit agitated. Please sit on rest on something. Oh my god! Oh no, bro. Punish me for it. Don't tell me he sits on him. <laughs> oh my god, you get jealous. I want to become a better throne for you. Did he say write me? Oh my god, this is gold. Oh, 
サルティアブラッドフォールンが有名な存在であるというこやっと長かった I think she still feels guilty デムルゴスやアルベドおそらく Everyone wants to do his best to do a good job for Ainz. Annihilating the Dwarf Kingdom? Shaltia? Yeah, that must be annihilation. Most powerful. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. There's always more to learn. Make the best out of it. Oh, they have a kid? And she's maybe still a bit pissed. Oh, I can't wait. This will be good, I guess. Oh, they go by on foot. No greater teleportation. I can't say it as good as Eins can. Reminds me a bit of slime, right? When they went to the Dwarven Kingdom for the first time. You just create the fortress? Are you kidding me? Bruh. Dude, Eins could build a whole kingdom by himself. Yeah, choose a room. There are more than enough for everyone. You can have two rooms if you want to. Or three. Make it four. Fancy! It has even glass! Problem with the Empire. <laughs> Did he figure out in the meantime what a vessel status? And he thinks it's Demiurge's plan. I mean, it makes sense. You have to think for yourself. You just can't take the words of someone else and get the knowledge from that, right? You have to think about it. <laughs> Dumb sister. And make up your own, like, conclusions. Their relationship. <laughs> but I would say it's better than in season one at the beginning. Oh, are they under attack, maybe? Ooh. Because we saw in the intro a fight with Shaltia, so maybe this is it. One single dwarf. Nice cloak. I can see you. Or as like, I can see you. It's news to them, apparently. Maybe word hasn't spread that far. Six days north. How nice. He doesn't know better. <laughs> if he knew. Oh. Yeah, of course, he shocked a monster. This is interesting that it seems like the dwarves don't know about Ainz so far. Maybe the dwarves are just isolated? Or like I said, maybe the word hasn't spread so far? Hundreds of years ago? Okay. All were made with runes. Interesting. And then they become less useful? Okay, the, so they changed. Oh. And I guess we will do that. Oh, you have to be... You need a certain skill? That's good! I like this dude. Hey, here we go. All of them. 
He's like, hell yeah, if I can do my rune stuff. That's dedication. <laughs> it's like with Nephilia's grandma. 100 Demi-Hume. Yeah, here we go! From the intro! Oh, do we see Shaltia in action? Medals. Ooh, but not metal enough for us. <laughs> all the Kuagoa. Not one, not two, all of them. Oh, here we go. Please don't end. I want to see the... Oh, here she is. Full armor. I wonder if she's killing some or if she just captures them. Oh, that's fast. <laughs> they can talk too. Interesting. I mean, I guess it's like the lizard, right? Oh, that's easy. <laughs> that was very easy. Not as action packed as the intro is. Don't talk too soon. <laughs> oh! <laughs> That's handy. さすが我が友。俺たちはその別動隊なんだ。こっちに逃げてきたドワーフを殺してやるんだよ。Why? God damn it. <laughs> okay, this was episode 5. Man, this episode was dope. Super funny. Like, the moment when Cocutus becomes uh, Iron's throne, like Shaltia, in season 2, I think it was, and all that stuff. And he's like, hey, who's better? Am I better? Is Shaltia better? I want to improve, basically. It's super funny. <laughs> and it seems like that Shaltia gets now the treatment that Cocutus got a little bit, where it's like, Get better, get more knowledge, learn, improve. Like Cocutus in season two, where, where he learned like stick and carrot, or carrot and stick, with the lizard man by ruling them and all that stuff. So now Shaltia is basically in line to do the same, to improve and get more knowledge. And then we have this whole dwarf stuff going on with the Kuokoa, which is super interesting because I didn't expect them to speak. I mean, we knew it from the trailer that they would fight or something, but I mean... It makes sense that they can talk because it's basically like the lizard man, I would say. And we have a similar situation with Gondo and Eins now going on, like with Nephilia's grandma and Eins back in season one, where it's like, you sell your soul and you work for me and I help you. Where it's now, you want, are you ready to, to sell your soul and I help you with your endeavors in runesmithing? And he's like, yeah, yeah, let's go, bro. And so that's also very interesting. And I guess we have to hurry now because the... Dwarves in the north are like six days away and the attack on them from the Kukua starts any moment now, is at least what the one Kukua said. So now we have to hurry to get there. So I guess maybe now comes some greater teleportation action or something, because otherwise I don't know if they can make it in like now <laughs> to get up to the north like six days. Um, but yeah, super hyped for the next episode. I can't wait to see where this is going. Um... But yeah, if you like what you saw, or if you want to support me, leave a like, subscribe, or comment, I would really appreciate it, and it would really help me. But yeah, thanks for watching, and until next time, bye-bye.